So we want to explore a couple of practical techniques for multi-partial facilitation. One very powerful set of techniques we call counter narratives. Let's look at those two for a moment and then we'll talk about a third category. The alternative narrative seeks to add to or make more complex or more full the experience or the story presented by the grand narrative. It is either presenting new facts, additional facts that are not expressed in this narrative, or it's offering that narrative from a different perspective. It's not saying that this narrative is incorrect. It's only saying there's more fullness to this narrative. That mythology exists for our society to understand the discovery of this continent. And it helps us understand and make sense of why this continent was populated the way it was. To make that mythology more complex, there's more facts that could be added that's left out of that mythology. You could also flip it around and tell that same story from the point of view of the indigenous peoples of the Caribbean and North America. And that would make a more complex narrative. May not refute the narrative, but it's gonna add more to it, right? So that alternative narrative pushes on this dominant narrative somewhat. The second version of, an, of a counter narrative could be the oppositional narrative. It's a narrative that says, this is incorrect. It refutes that narrative. And it refutes that narrative on two grounds, either moral grounds or factual grounds, and sometimes both. One powerful example of both is if you could think of um, Germany during the Second World War as a potential hegemon, at least in part of our world, the hegemony that it was creating was about the extermination of a whole people, the genocide of a whole people, right? Well, the truth of that wasn't that people had left Europe willingly and the, the country was being remade demographically. It was that there was a Holocaust being perpetrated. The deniers of that Holocaust have a, a narrative and the oppositional narrative would say, that's just not true. We have evidence in the, in the form of graves, mass graves. We have family lines that no longer exist. And on moral grounds, this narrative is untrue. So that would represent an oppositional narrative, okay? And as a facilitator, you can use those interchangeably. And there's different reasons for why you might use one or the other. There's also another set that I'll just call number three and categorize as the others, right? And there's many of these other types, but two that are emerging in our world right now, in our society right now, is the post-blank. You can call it post-racial, you can call it uh, post-colonial, you could call it post-gendered. Um, there's a reality that says, because social identities are largely social constructs, we now live in a post-blank world. We no longer experience race as a society the way that we used to. We no longer experience gender identity the same way that we used to. We are post that. The influence of those social identities are no longer what they used to be, and we are now meta or post. And that works as a counter narrative to say that this narrative can be ignored. It just doesn't have influence anymore because we're just past that, right? Racism doesn't exist in the United States anymore because the most powerful person in the country is black. How can we talk about race as an issue when the most powerful position held is now held by a person of color? We're post. We're post the influence of race because of that one example, right? Or we're non-binary now as a society. So the way that um, power and access to resources has been divided in such a binary way in our society between us and them, 
no longer exists in the ways that it used to. It's no longer clearly people of color and white people and men and women and um, U.S. citizens and non-U.S. citizens. We live in many more continuums of social identities where the lines get blurred. And because the lines are blurred now, this is no longer true. So we live in this non-binary us-them world. So we have to examine this differently. Okay? These are not as common as these two narratives, but they are emergent, and there's more of that. Especially on our campuses, you'll see more evidence of this. So counter-narratives can be a very powerful tool for facilitators in working against this master narrative. There's lots of ways to do that, though, right? You can introduce readings to your classroom if you're a teacher or an instructor. You can invite guest speakers into your dialogue. You can have a panel of, of people who share their experiences. You yourself can offer a counter narrative from your own lived experiences as a facilitator when you're being multipartial. The most powerful way and the most sustainable way is when you can teach your participants how to offer their own counter narratives from their own lived experiences. And why that's particularly powerful is when they learn that they have their own lived experiences that critically challenge this, then they learn how to deconstruct the power and influence of this on their own dynamic and on their own narratives. So they begin to be their own critical agents against this narrative. And they, when they learn how to do that for one another, and together, this influence is much more reduced, okay? So again, counter-narratives, a very powerful way to challenge the dominant narrative.